As a .NET developer, I host most of my applications on Microsoft Azure. I have a few simple web applications, as well as a software as a service product hosted on Microsoft Azure. It includes an Azure SQL Server instance, multiple web applications running on an Azure App Service Plan, and a function app, including a storage account. Besides the production environment, I also have a test environment and a developer environment. For this simple software as a service product, I already have and manage more than 10 Azure resources. As a developer, I don't really know much about managing infrastructure. I use the Azure portal to create new services, to configure them and to make changes for settings of existing services. I don't like this manual work, it's not repeatable and I don't like dealing with the Azure portal with its thousand functions I don't need and its ever-changing user interface. As a .NET developer, I ask myself, how great would it be if I could manage all my resources using code? And well, it turned out you can actually do that with something called infrastructure as code. As said earlier, I'm a .NET developer with a lot of experience developing for the .NET platform. However, I'm not an operations person. I recently got into infrastructure as code and this video is the first in a series where I will talk about what we can do as .NET developers to manage and create new resources on Microsoft Azure using infrastructure as code. I will also talk about the benefits of using infrastructure as code, such as how and why it makes deployment of Azure resources simpler, more reliable, and in general, what makes it easier to use compared to the Azure portal. Let's start by looking at a few definitions of what infrastructure as code is. Wikipedia states that infrastructure as code is the process of managing and provisioning computer data centers through machine readable definition files rather than physical hardware configuration or interactive configuration tools. Red Hat provides a simpler definition. Infrastructure as code is the managing and provisioning of infrastructure through code instead of through manual processes. Last but not least, here's the Microsoft definition. Infrastructure as code uses DevOps methodology and versioning with a descriptive model to define and deploy infrastructure. Just as the same source code always generates the same binary, an infrastructure as code model generates the same environment every time it deploys. In my own words, Infrastructure as code lets me use source code or configuration files to create and manage Azure resources instead of using the Azure portal. And similar to source code compiling into the same DLLs, infrastructure as code allows me to generate the same infrastructure over and over again. Let's take a look at the two main groups of the available infrastructure as code tooling. Declarative or functional. It uses a defined syntax to describe the desired state of the resources. The system will figure out how to get to that state. The approach usually uses configuration files such as YAML or JSON. Imperative or procedural. It uses a step-by-step -step definition to define the resources. We describe what the system needs to do to get to the desired state. This approach usually uses program code such as c -sharp or other programming languages. Let's look at what tools for the .NET world and deploying resources to Microsoft Azure are available and in what category they fall into. Azure Resource Manager, often called ARM Templates, was introduced by Microsoft in 2014. It's Azure only and uses the JSON format for its definitions and the Azure CLI for its execution. Bicep was created by Microsoft and became generally available in mid-2021. 
It's pretty new and adoption is currently less than ARM, but it is intended to be its successor. It uses a domain-specific language and compiles its definitions into ARM templates using the JSON format. Terraform is an established tool and widely used. It was introduced in 2014 by HashiCorp and uses a domain-specific YAML format to define and configure cloud resources. Pulumi was created by a company with the same name in 2018. It allows us to use our favorite programming language, including C-Sharp, to define and configure infrastructure. Let's quickly look at those four tools. As you can see, there are different levels of abstraction, declarative and imperative tools using different configuration formats, such as JSON, YAML, a popular programming language, or ADSL. Some of the tools keep the state, meaning they know what was deployed and others are stateless. There are many more infrastructure as code tools available. The goal here is to show you a quick overview of the different toolings available. Each tool uses a unique approach to infrastructure as code and it depends on many factors which tooling is the best solution for any given scenario. In a future video of this series, I will take a closer look at each of these tools and use them to create and manage Azure resources. Let's step back for a second and talk about the general benefits of using infrastructure as code. Infrastructure as code has several benefits compared to manually creating and configuring cloud resources. It saves time. We don't have to navigate to the Azure portal, find the right service and click through the configuration wizard. All we have to do is to run the script defining the infrastructure. The more we need to create the resources, the more time we will save. We write it once and apply it as many times as we need it. It acts as documentation. I have to be honest, I don't have documentation of all my resources that don't use infrastructure as code. They might need a connection string here and a feature flag there, all configured using the Azure portal. Infrastructure as code forces us to define those configurations in the definition. As a result, we get documentation of what the different resources need to work as intended. It makes it reliable and repeatable. Imagine you have a few resources all configured using the Azure portal. For whatever reason you happen to accidentally delete those resources. It could take you a long time to create those resources and figure out how to configure them. If you have an infrastructure as code definition, you simply run the script and you have everything you need in place again. Versioning your infrastructure changes. With infrastructure as code, we either have program code or configuration files, but both can be checked into our Git repository. It allows us to keep track of infrastructure changes. We can even document what requirement or new feature triggered a change in the infrastructure by linking the commit to our issue tracking system such as Jira, ClickUp or whatever we use. Process automation. We can include infrastructure creation and configuration in our CI-CD pipeline. For example, we can create and configure a test environment before deploying our application to that test infrastructure, all without touching a single resource ourselves. We learned what infrastructure as code is and what benefits it offers compared to manually creating and managing Azure resources using the Azure portal. Everything I said about infrastructure as code in this video also applies to different stacks or different cloud providers such as Google Cloud or AWS. However, as a .NET developer hosting my resources on Microsoft Azure, I use it as an example. In future videos of this series, we will take a closer look at the available tooling for .NET developers and Microsoft Azure 
including ARM templates, Bicep, Pulumi and Terraform. If you learned something, I would really appreciate a like for this video and if you want to learn about infrastructure as code or .NET development, consider subscribing. And I will see you in the next video.